Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, everyone, to the Miles of Crawford Variety Hour. Woo! Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, all right, everyone, just wanted to let you all know that the last episode was a little late because it was a fucking editing nightmare. We put, what would you say, Miles? Uh, oh, fuck, man. Like, between the two of us, at least 20 hours. Yeah, we were going to re-record it, but it was just, uh, we just didn't want to give up. We're like that. We're like, no, we're going to get this. Um, I'm sure that there was a lot of blood, sweat, tears. Um, I think Lots of tears. Maybe, Maybe uh, at one point we both briefly considered uh, giving up our firstborn sons to Satan. Yeah, in order yeah, to absolutely. Just figure it out, because but uh, I thought that we did okay. I mean, in the end, it, it it's not our best, but it's not our worst either. So uh... yeah, fuck all that noise, man. Like I. Like, I thought I would have shot someone because, you know, we already had that problem in America. But, like, way to go, Crawford. Like, you fucking kicked ass and take names, like, with the way that you were able to, like, dedicate yourself. And for those of you who are like, oh, well, I mean, editing is a bitch. No. Like, Crawford sat there at 1 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock in the morning and still was able to get up and take her kid to school. Like, I but through blood, sweat, and tears of getting, you know, this edited to the best that we could. So we just, we knew that if we, we, if we had re-recorded, it, it would have been just, as good. No, it would have just sucked. So it I It would have been us just trying to get through it. Like, okay, fuck it. After doing two days worth of that shit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and hopefully yesterday's sound checks will uh, help assist with this episode that we have now. So I think it will. Actually, we just uh, restarted because we thought we had some static. Like, we're paranoid now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are. We're like, oh, oh my god, oh my god, I think it's messed up. Uh, so yeah, I think that was like two days worth of, of us just every free moment we had working on it. Uh, it was only through the sheer efforts of our collective amateur sound engineering skills. <laughs> That's what I'm calling them. <laughs> That we I like were, it. Yeah, that we were able to finally cobble it together into something that's just above listenable. But uh, that's what we do here at the Sea Variety Hour. If we consistently gave you the best every week, you'd expect it. Take it for granted, and then, uh, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's up and streaming for your listening pleasure, just as all of our episodes are. If you're just joining us, a new listener, our last three episodes have been a series on uh, drugs in America, a mini-series. Well, it was kind of a... The, later part of the 70s, 80s, early part of the 90s, so it was a little little uh, time spurt there. Dealing with the Contras, Gary Webb, who was a, an author, a journalist, um, his, uh, it was a book, right? A Dark Alliance? The Dark Alliance, yeah, it was a series that okay. he put out in we'll the uh, Mercury News uh, newspaper out in California that spread like wildfire. But then it was turned into a book. It, I mean, Correct, okay. and then later on a movie. That's what I wanted to make sure. And then we kind of talked about the crack cocaine being pushed into African-American communities and the mass incarceration of people living in those areas that were and still are affected by those actions. We plan on continue talking about every decade, about ongoing what's going on currently, how we got here. Uh, every episode we tend to deal with that. Uh, some of them will just totally dedicate to that. But this week, we are shaking our variety butts. It's, <laughs> it's party time at the MC Variety Hour. We had a terrible week last week, so we had some damn fun this time. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Crawford. And, uh, you know, before we roll out our shenanigans, uh, we always have to do our weekly shout-outs. Shout uh, because Boop, boop. Exactly. Uh, to our favorite podcast this week and other noteworthy mentions. Um by the way, obviously, you know, I find a majority of uh, all podcasts through um, some through Patreon, but mostly I find them through Twitter and Podbean. Um, and I like to, you know, seriously, I love you. I love you, Twitter. I love you, Potter and family. You guys have been a phenomenal. We are up to Aren't the best. They are. We are up to 502 followers on wow. Twitter. We, that that is that is a hundred extra followers that we have got over the last like three weeks. So awesome. it is, and they're not, and these aren't like the shit. Um, how can I put it? These aren't a bunch of like 
I am a author, writer, you know, oh, blah, not blah. Bots. They're not bots. These are legitimate other podcasts that are following us through the wonderful thing they're that most of us people. do. They're real people. Uh, Follow Friday has, has treated us very, very well. Um, so... Anyways, a lot of my uh, my, my podcast that I, I want to uh, give some shout outs to is uh, I recently today listened to Mocha Madness. Mocha Madness, you are phenomenal. Love her love her podcast. She's very raw. She's very uh, just open and honest about everything that's going on. Uh, we are all mad here. Uh, wonderful, wonderful podcast. Shake my head with Lisa and Sam, uh, two ladies who are in their car. Uh, podcasting from their vehicles and oh, Jesus. it's so funny and they're Canadian and they make me laugh and I really enjoy listening to them um, the FMK uh, show podcast if you're not listening to them you definitely should uh, and there'll be a few others at the end of this that I will like to give uh, shout outs to but today most recently as well um, I do want to get uh, shout outs to uh, Drinks with Larry Drinks with Larry is uh, again an Ohio bread Woo, Ohio! Ohio, we're funny. So funny, and but Drinks with Larry is a uh, is a great podcast as well. Uh, just a delightful, funny, insightful on a variety of things that uh, as we are, uh, they're a little more well put together. But I definitely enjoy uh, Drinks with Larry. So uh, yeah, that's what I've got today so far in the beginning of this. Um, that sounds really great. I'm very excited. I actually really, I did listen to Mocha Madness too. I was on, uh, one of our many streaming sites that we pay for. And, <laughs> uh, I, it was listed in the, like, noteworthy section or whatever. And I gave it a little bit of listen this morning before I went to work. So, did you get your tickets to the military parade yet? Uh, no. Uh, tell me about this military <laughs> parade we're uh, having. Frankly, I can't wait to spend how many tax dollars on a North Korea-style parade showcasing our great might and power, while also paying homage to our dear leader. I believe it's very classy and diplomatic. It really sends the right message around the world to all of our allies and people that we're trying to get along with. I mean, if there's money to burn, let's burn it. We're an excessively luxurious country, damn it. Let's show it off. And I actually got some gold flakes that I uh, am currently tossing on to you right now. Gold flakes for everyone! I should have mailed them. That way you could have been like, and cue the gold flakes. Cue the gold flakes. And uh, gold flakes for everybody, man. Gold uh, flakes gold of flakes. galore. Gold I... flakes for everyone! So exciting. So exciting. Except we don't give gold flakes to... Minorities. The minorities, the immigrants, the poor, the lower middle class. Definitely no gold flakes for those women who have a choice in their body. And no gold flakes for anyone making less than $150,000 a year. Seriously, um, gold flakes are uh, for the rich and the fabulous and the famous and the white bread men. Uh, there is, I mean, so many gold flakes are out there that Mike Pence did not, Mike Pence did not even have to stand for the Korean national anthem when the fucking Olympics began. So kudos to you, you fucking piece of shit, Mike Pence. Doesn't he look like he's super evil? And if you shook his hand, he'd steal your soul. Yes. Fuck I mean, you, Mike does, Pence. I don't believe that he's actually a human. Uh, I, I agree. I agree. He's not. He's not a human. He is covered in gold flakes of his own uh, religion that he has made up himself that does not believe in women's choice equal opportunity um or pretty much for anything so hey guys enjoy we're really having a resurgence I, i've talked about, i haven't mentioned this in a few podcasts but the quiver full movement everybody look it up q u i v e r ball movement and it, it's all about like taking away women's rights and putting them back in the home and returning back to uh purity yes that's my cat again you know, okay. they've been asleep all day and they're like, sounds like, sounds like I need to inject myself into this situation. But, um, I've been noticing there's a lot more candidates that are just full on, like, this is, who was the senator or somebody running unopposed? And he's like, I want a hot meal every night when I come home from work. And oh my God, that's right. Fuck him. I don't even know who oh, he right. is or where he's from. Yeah. Like he was all... I mean, I'm all about women's rights, but yes, when I come home, I expect that my wife will have, you know, dinner made, my children taken care of. Da -da -da. I'm like, ah, uh, and I, okay, 
So side note, and I, I, we're a variety hour, so fuck off. This is what we this do. Is side notes. Side, side notes are a variety. I welcome <laughs> them, please. So there was um, a wonderful thing that I was reading today, and I wish I had written down the sources and did all that great. Hey, by the way, here's a great show notes. I don't. Okay. However, I did read this thing, and I believe that I was actually on LinkedIn, which is, you know, my boss, uh, the company I work for is hardcore. Be on LinkedIn, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, it was about a woman who, you know, was trying to defend herself as being a woman and how, uh, you know, she was only made to be a woman, according to other yes. men, uh, because of the... The, the duties that her mother gave to her and what was really fascinating is that I was reading this article and at the same time I was listening to Home Video Hustle and don't get me wrong I love Home Video Hustle they did a great podcast recently about the uh, the movie called uh, Dolomite so wow. their, their latest episode was fucking fantastic but there was a after they did their review of the movie they went into um, this theory about how there's a, a third woman that, that you know, or there's a, a third person there and she's a woman and she's a lesbian and she's talking about, um, I believe she's a lesbian and I could be wrong and if I got you wrong, I'm so sorry. Sorry uh, if I assumed if I miss If I'm misremembering, but if I remember what I was listening to the podcast today was that, you know, she was talking about how her mother, you know, raised her with, you know, um, learning how to do all these chores and he thought that her mother raised her to do these chores because that's what a woman is supposed to do. No, it's because uh, you're supposed to take care of your house, dick face. <laughs> and, and, she, and she was like, no, I get where you're coming from. However, my mother did this so I wouldn't have to rely on anybody else to do these things for me. Those are life and, skills. But I really did appreciate you know, it was a good banter between the man and the woman about what I appreciated the most about it was that neither of one of them got into a a, a, a frothing at the mouth, you know, fuck right. you, you piece of shit, you know, wrong. But it was, you know, he and most men and even my own husband, who I've been with for 15 years, who's been married to me, thinks that what I have done and what I have been taught has been taught to me as like a woman who is supposed to obey by her husband who's right. supposed to obey by the rules and I, me i'm like hey have you met me because everything that i have done has been for a step in my own direction of independence right. the reason that me my husband and god love him and i hope that we never get divorced and he's an amazing human being and even though he fucking frustrates the shit out of me is that we do have our own separate banking accounts oh. he pays for his bills i pay for mine we don't share anything if I need a hundred bucks to pay for a bill, I tell him to pay it and vice versa. But we don't share money. We no longer, we haven't had a shared banking account and probably out of the 15 years we've been together for at least the last 12 years, we have not had a shared banking account. Oh, wow. Um, we just do everything separately. And at the same point, like everybody finds that strange, but at the same point I say, look, I like this because one, it holds me accountable for my own money. Two, when I am short and he's like, hey, didn't you just get like this amazing commission? What happened to it? What, what bills are you paying? I'm like, hey, I paid off this hospital bill, this hospital bill, electric, cell phone, blah, blah. Oh, okay. Well, you know, it's not that he's not going to give me money, I, you know, but he wants to know what happened to the money that I had. Right. And yes, I could lie to him, but I don't. But we have separate banking accounts just for the fact that if he does, let's say, and for him too, he gets bonuses every month. Right. And, you know, he wants to get, you know, a fucking brand new TV that's on him but if he doesn't pay a hospital bill that's in his name that's on you bro you chose to buy a TV instead of pay off a hospital bill I'm not going to pay it for you right. not to be an asshole been together for a long time and your credit's my credit but no it's not right. you know and uh, but I think it's one of those things where you know after so many you know we, we tried this, this the joint checking account and it wasn't working because why did you spend five dollars at McDonald's well why did you spend five dollars at the coffee shop well why did you spend five dollars at you know and that's it, it began a lot of fights I where see. this way it was equilateral like I'll pay off my bills you pay off your bills and, you know if, if the electric bill is five hundred and twelve dollars and I only have four hundred dollars left I want you to pay the extra hundred and twelve bucks right and vice versa when I you know might have hit our neighbor's car and our insurance might have gone up uh, I might have you know said hey 
here's some extra dough off the rip because I know in the long run, this is going to up our insurance. I can't guarantee that I can give you X amount of dollars every month, but here's 200 bucks for the fact that really it was a fucking 1995 neon. Like, fuck off. Like, I hit your fucking neon. I put a dent in it. It was a piece of shit anyways. Right. I'm not sorry about it, but our insurance is. So, and the dude came out in his goddamn underwear and nothing else on in the middle of winter. Like, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, they're idiots. They parked their car right behind our fucking driveway. And it was our last, it was our last day. It was our last day of moving out. Like, this was a very last car load I had to put in my Kia at the time. You know, when you're like the fucking last load of shit. Right. Put it everything in my car, reverse, and get the fuck out of there. The problem is the reverse ended up to be in a car at the bottom of the driveway. And oh, that's so, smart for them to park there. I mean, they knew it. They knew it. They these guys, they're they might be fucking dumb as a box of rocks, but they're smart as shit in the same uh, you know, moronic ways. So, but that's how it works out. And and again, I have a stuff of independence. If for any reason, if for any reason whatsoever. And Andy, I love you. I don't plan on divorcing you. But if we ever get divorced, we at the most have to figure out who's going to buy for groceries and like the kids' lunches. Uh-huh. That's it. Like he pays for the mortgage right. and then I pay for electricity. So, okay, if you take over the electricity bill, that's fine because that amount of money that I'm putting in for electricity, I'm going to need to save up to put into my own apartment. So we already have it to the point where if anything happens independently, I already know where my bills are going, how much money I'm spending, and I can rely on just myself and never have to rely on, I'm going to take him for all he's got. Well, I don't have to. I mean, I, not that I would anyways, but if I had to need money, I would say, hey, if I'm going to get a X amount of bedroom apartment, I know this is how much money I make. This is how much money you make. I'll carry the kid's insurance, but I'm going to need this from you instead. Right. It's already, and it's already, and it's again, it's not because I don't love him. It's because I have my own self independency and Mike Pence and Donald Trump and all of them have no idea how to give women that sense of independence. They don't think that we know. How to um, drive. Not only that, but I mean, they're talking about no, their- I mean, like in a, not in a literal sense, I mean, but like we can't survive on our own without a man telling us how to balance our checkbook, where to put the money. We're, we're taking money away. Have you seen that? Uh, a part of the new UN bill is that we're no longer funding yes. other countries who are helping women get abortions. And I'm not trying to be an asshole. And I'm not, again, I've said this probably at least 10 times out of the last 23 podcasts. I am not pro life or nor am I pro choice. I'm pro, it's not my fucking decision. That's how it is. That, that's I, how I am too. It's not that I like abortion or the idea of it. I probably personally wouldn't get an abortion, but I support the right to choose. Exactly. And the fact that we're going to defund countries that have, you know, women and not even women. We're talking about a majority of them in other countries are dying of sepsis who are dying because right. they are, they are still getting alley style, you know, dark back yeah. alley style abortions. And they're getting these massive infections because they got an abortion that we're no longer going to fund them to save these women's lives because they didn't have, well, she should have thought about closing her legs. Okay. Well, in some countries they don't have a fucking condom convenience store no. and some, and some, and, and some of these countries, these women are being raped and they're being, you know, they don't have an option, but to carry their uncle's fucking baby. And if they don't want to do that because they don't want to have a kid at 12 years old, then they shouldn't have to have a kid at 12 years old. And we should also be able to, I'm not saying fund the abortions. I'm saying fund, if, if we have the money, quote unquote, if we had the money to help them create a better sex education system and to help them give condoms to young children, to give them to women, then we should. And instead, a lot of these countries, I, I'm sure you've seen this too, where, oh, where is it? It's not in Indonesia, but it's somewhere along those lines where, they are creating condoms, which actually clamps on to a man's penis. Um, women wear them kind of like they would wear, um, what are those called? That's Proper. pretty neat. They're, they're, they're like the, the back in the 90s. What do women always wear? Oh, uh. The sponges? Yes. Okay, so it's like the sponges from back then, and they wear them, and if they're raped, it claps on to the man's genitals. And oh, that way when the yeah. man pulls out, it actually it, it doesn't hurt the woman but it hurts the man and oh. it actually pulls at his skin as he's trying to get out because it clamps on like it's like a clamp but it's like a silicone clamp that's like hurts teeth them. 
there's like teeth that clamps on so that way. I want some pussy teeth. Yeah, and that way if they get raped and and their and their um, offender goes in for um, medical care, they know that that guy's getting medical care because he's a rapist, right? And not just because of anything else, but because he has this thing onto his penis. And they know that the only reason that's on there is because he was trying to rape a small child, woman, or whatever. Uh, I really just personally would love to be like, my pussy's got teeth. You really don't want none of this. You really don't want it. You really don't want it. But anyways, I'm sorry. That was like a whole long tangent that I did no, not need to go I, uh, into. I apologize. I actually enjoyed it, and I was going to interject something, but I have short-term memory loss due to, um, I don't know. But uh, I was going to interject. We're talking about the Trump military parade. No, no, no. I, it was something about your tangent that I wanted to uh, interject on there, and I was letting you finish, and then I, I was doodling on my pad here, and... Uh, listening to you. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I was doodling what you were talking about, actually, like a pussy with some teeth. It, I, I thought I thought it was hilarious. Not hilarious, I mean, in the whole, you know, but just the idea of... You know who could have, I mean, honestly, I mean, what would have happened to Larry Nassar if 20 years ago some of them women had that? Well, they could give their daughters, like, they sent them gymnastics practice with, with teeth in their pussy, like, do something. I, I dare dude, ya. I, it, first of all, Fuck you, Larry Nassar. Mm. Fuck you. How many people want to beat his ass? I saw somebody else was like, what, five minutes in a room alone with Larry Nassar. I'm like, God damn, everybody wants to whip. I mean, I get it. Don't get me wrong. I want to whip his ass. But I mean. 250 women. And not only that, but that man had enough audacity. That man felt such enough white male privilege that he made a PowerPoint presentation to the police department to show how and why he victimized his women because of what he thought he was doing was okay. A PowerPoint presentation really about nice. sexual harassment and victimization because he felt so privileged to do so. So fuck you, Larry Nassar. Anyway, People really want... I just haven't seen that. I mean, I always see hatred for anybody that commits a, a crime against a child. But yeah. I was just like, wow, people are like, I really just want to beat the fuck out of that dude. It's like, woo! I think I don't think Larry Nassar is going to survive in prison. No, no, he's not. And, uh, no, he's he's a piece of shit. And uh, I don't, I, I will not feel bad for him on any occasion and make that, make me a bad human being. Um, but I, if whatever happens to him, he gets what he deserves. I'm not saying eye for an eye is correct because, you know, I'm all about, you know, let's just have this world be a more peaceful place but people but a person like that who for 20 years and michigan state who allowed that to happen to all of those women to all of those girls to our gymnastics team you know who allowed that to happen and turned their turned their eyes to it turned their faces to it and just waited they waited for more evidence you waited it's like they waited for bill cosby they waited for harvey weinstein right. they waited for larry so nassar safe to come out yeah, until it was safe to come out, and now we're holding them accountable. But why wasn't? And I'm and I'm and I'm glad everybody can be up in arms about all this firing of people. But in my opinion, if we don't set a precedence now, if we don't stop this now, where does it end? Where is the final straw? And if we don't change this, and for anybody who has children, who has nieces or nephews, or anybody under the age of 18 years old who they care about, save the children. Save the children, and this is not. This is a pro-life because right. it's not. It you guys can be pro-birth all you want, but if you want a pro-life situation, then you should stand behind, you know, every woman who comes forward. And well, well, Crawford, well, how this. about those who are, you know, I mean, it's it's you guys are proving guilty before being proven innocent. Yeah. Uh. uh, uh yeah. And I'm not saying that there hasn't been situations where women have falsely accused men of rape. Right. Those just have, they're, but just most of them broke, have, you know. Yeah, but most of them who have been falsely accused are black men who are falsely accused by white women. Because and I, you know what? A lot of times, because those white women are doing something they shouldn't be, so they blame it on a black man. Or they're afraid of what their father, their boyfriend, their cousin, or their mother is That's going to I think. Mean, as, and, as like, oh, it was a black dude that victimized me. Yep, and they're all about pounds. Like, oh, it's like uh, how I tagged you in that video about the NRA, oh, and the NRA is all about you know, 
NRA white dudes. But if an NRA pro, you know, black militia, they're like, wait, wait, wait. Uh, well, I mean. What do you have? <laughs> I died when I watched that. I died when I watched that. When they're like, you know, there, there's these two white guys. If anybody hasn't seen, uh, uh, what is it? College Humor. And they did this video where there's these two white guys and they're pro NRA. Uh, you know, they're very, you know, Southern or not even Southern. They're more like Midwestern white dudes, you know, pro M- NRA gun rights. Da, da, da. Well, then they bring in this black guy with, um, you know, a, a gun strapped across his chest oh, with God, bullets so across funny. his chest. And he's like, yeah, fight for the arms. And these two white dudes are looking at him like, well, 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 y- yeah, but uh, like, yeah, we are free to form a militia. W- where do you live? who's your militia what's going on and you could just see like the fear in their face when i'm like yeah you guys are all about pro gun rights and pro this and this as long as it you know attends to the white guy but when the black guys follow suit oh well fuck i mean that's i mean philadelphia could set the fucking goddamn town on fire and fucking turn cars over but if black people go to the street because of black you know because of police brutality fuck man Fuck, well, it's, it's mayhem everywhere. Ooh, they fire that dean, the medical dean over Larry Nassar scandal. Ooh, Everybody there you go. Heads are rolling. I'm gonna let you uh, chit chat. I need to go get some oh. more coffee for my feet. All right, Ma, you go get it. Um, so, anyways, uh, Trump wants a military parade. I, look, Kitty, stop it. I apologize. I my cats come out to play every time they hear me talking on the fucking podcast. Uh, that ain't gonna turn into some Bondi Python bullshit, I don't know what is. Uh, coincidentally, the universe seemed to take notice of Trump this week of, after centuries of ignoring us when NASA announced Thursday that they're tracking two, two asteroids that are going to pass very near to Earth. See now, it's been my theory for a very long time that, uh, we don't have alien neighbors because we are literally the assholes of the universe. Um, do you think that our galaxy is dead for a reason? All of the planets have been vacated. You know, the next galaxy over is probably nothing but planet hopping, party style. And we're over here like, uh, hello? Anyone? Anyone? Nobody's home. We're all dead. Um, that's an actual message from the universe, which is actually spelled out in our constellations, but, uh, we decided to play connect the dots into funny symbols and animals. And, uh... I don't know, some people too. Uh, I'm pretty sure when our space probes pass through, they turn off the lights and play dead until we're gone. Like, boy, there's just nobody out here. Do, 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 do. Shh, here comes Earth again. We don't want them to know that we're not here, that we're gone, that we are that we don't want to play with them. Please, shh. And you know, you always have like that one loud relative who's like, what's going on over here, guys? That's gonna give it away. Some days, that's how we're going to find alien life is somebody is going to goof up and expose themselves. And here we're going to find this whole galaxy of advanced technology where these people are just hopping planet to planet. Like, woohoo, the Jetsons. Like, there'll be little cars. Like, do 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 uh, I'm very excited about that. I probably won't be alive, but um, we all return to Stardust, so I guess we'll all get to witness that. Um, what do you think about that, Miles? Well, I was oh, just I'm talking so about close. The, constellations and uh the Jetsons the <laughs> yeah. Jetsons I was talking about the next galaxy over like they got some party hopping fun <laughs> times you know and like it's probably like the Jetsons you know like they're just like they just, they're just I, planet I to planet I, I, I really do I think that uh you know so my theory is is that if God is not real and that there wasn't one man that created this entire universe and that all the scientists out there are actually scientists and are speaking the truth. Uh, shocking. I know. Uh, is that a, uh, Oh, that's, that's that sip of like really hot coffee. Oh, I know. I'm Fresh sorry. Like, uh, mm-hmm. It's so good. And anybody who is like, what does miles enjoy the most? I, there's a few uh, local coffees that I enjoy, but if you ever feel like sending us gifts, I uh, what is it called? Uh, Gavalia, majestic. Oh, Gavalia, yeah. Yes, the majestic roast. Oh that yes, that shit. Oh fuck, man! You put that with some uh, a little bit of uh, vanilla caramel 
fucking uh, oh, shit. I can't even talk right now. I'm so like, ooh, it's so good. Uh, vanilla caramel coffee creamer. There we go. Oh yeah, I know what kind you're talking about. Oh, it's good. so fucking delicious. Anyway, so the universe hates us. Uh, all scientists are telling the truth, and the fact of the matter is, is that they were trying to tell us that they existed, and instead of listening to them, we created Jesus. And Jesus was actually trying to tell us about the world around us. And instead of saying there's alien life forms and that they're not actually all human, we made the aliens into one secular being called God. And they were like, you guys fucked this up. You fucked up our social experiment. And instead of playing with it, we're just going to let you destroy yourselves. And that is, uh, that's what they are. I mean, we're a bunch of selfish assholes that totally ruined it for them. So... The universe is against us, and we're, we're very fucked. We're very fucked. We just are. We're we're so. I mean, look at us. I mean, all the exennials and millennials. I mean, we're just fucking shit up, aren't we, Crawford? Oh uh, yeah, we really are. And uh, being the xenial millennials, that ooh, that's that's a fun way. To, I like that combination. Um, that we are. We decided to take this a look this week at what millennials are ruining in America. Uh, what did you uncover this week, Miles? From what Facebook tells me, we apparently have an arsenal of life hacks and are ruining everything. That's well, like every other article I see, it's like millennials are the worst. You we're the worst. Us. But we're the worst. Uh, I do want to uh, break in with a market report on avocados. Oh God, I've been waiting all day. Prices are still going up, up, up. Currently, avocados are holding at $1.58 each. Considering how many we need to eat to sustain our essential daily intake, this could really bite into folks' budgets. But that's okay. We aren't getting any Social Security. Health care is outrageous. And you can't take your wealth built on life hacks with you, so may as well spend it on your avocados while you're here. So don't forget, uh, we are also about to go through a bout of tequila shortage. White girl waste is about to be a serious problem through the Xennial Millennial Lifetime. Be careful, everyone. We're ruining tequila as well. Come on, we're drinking too much of it, guys. Uh, we've got to make this shit last. You know how long it takes to make tequila forever? I saw that commercial. Just fucking drink your fucking bourbon, okay? <laughs> so I thought we'd uh, throw in a little bit of history for our listeners. Um, I tried to find something relevant. Um, I thought some of these were. So I thought, you know what? Let's do that. Um, starting History is the fucking key to the future. That's right. So this is today. Uh, today's date, February 9th in history. Uh, in 1775, British Parliament declares Massachusetts colony is in rebellion. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go. We're starting off America. It's great. Things are good. Uh, uh. Uh, fast forward to 1950, Senator Joseph McCarthy from Wisconsin had announced that 205 communists had made their way into the U.S. State Department. Communists! That was the Red Scare. Red uh, Scare! Oh, God, oh, God! <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm going to keep adding background music. <laughs> you know what? We, that's fine. We should have sound, We should have a sound effect bar, too, so we can be like, womp, womp. Wow, wow. I think that's great. We should. I think that would really uh, spice up our variety. Uh, let's see here. 1961, the USA Medicare program. President Kennedy asked Congress to approve a health insurance program, the Medicare program, for 14.2 million Americans 65 or older, financed by an increase in Social Security taxes, which I can hear Republicans going, Wait, oh! what? what? You want us fucking old people? who have worked for this country to expect Social Security and a raise of Medicaid in order to help pay for the uprising and fucking medication costs for us to be able to live longer and to work harder for you? What the shit, Crawford? I know, it's upsetting. Um, did the Winter Olympics start today or yesterday? Today. Okay, so, and also today in history, um, not quite, uh, and today in the present, the Olympics, Winter Olympics started today. I'm Yay! Gonna add that one in. <laughs> um, 1964, first appearance of Beatles on the Ed Sullivan Show. 
and they got 73.7 million viewers, which is a butt ton. For back then, not everybody had a TV, you know? In 1964, I have we all not watched The Wonder Years? Do you remember how long it took for fucking Kevin to get a TV and a color TV? Yeah. There was a whole show on this shit. It was a really big deal. Really big deal. Um, let's see here. What else we got? Ooh, jump forward to 2012. The U.S. Department of Defense produces new guidelines that remove restrictions on the use of women in combat. That's right. That's our time. We're about to whoop some ass. So Probably I can use a gun? Time. Yeah. Well, I'm a measly old woman. Do I know how to use a Should gun and shoot people? Tent? Should I be in the medical tent? I don't understand. How do I get away from my housewife duties in order to save our country? I can't also. I can't do both. <laughs> it's only 2012. There's no way I know how to like do both. Oh, Lord. Uh, and, and then 2014, legal rights extended for same-sex couples. The United States Attorney General Eric Holder stated in a speech that the Justice Department was going to make a greater effort to extend rights to same-sex partners. Some of the rights to be extended included being able to make visits at federal prisons and the right not to testify against a spouse in court. Which, I don't understand why legal rights would be extended for same-sex couples. Is this... when? How long have we had... Uh, 2013 is when we were able to get married. Okay, so uh, if it, all marriage is Okay, same, now we, I'm sorry. You know what I, I, mean? I don't mean to say that, that I'm speaking for the LGBTQIA community. I'm not. I Not that yes, I have anything against them. Stop uh, it, Miles. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just saying that before somebody's like, uh, wait, Miles just said that, but she was just talking about her husband. I'm just saying that in 2013, am I wrong? Was it 2013? I, Shit. I think you're right, because I just feel like that would have came after. Um... But I just think, you know, if it became, marriage became legal, why did there have to be, why did they have to be granted, okay, whatever, whatever. No, but, no, you're right, because it was June 26th in 2013 that the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that okay. we, that we could get married, but in, it wasn't until 2014 that we said, even though you're legally married, so a, a entire year after before a wife could not actually speak against her wife Whatever. as a right to testify. Uh, I, we're so fucked. Like, we're always so fucking behind. Go ahead. I'm sorry. But, no, that's just stupid. That's just, I just uh, was thinking about that. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. But, what the uh, fuck? I found all kinds of uh, Today in History facts, and I just picked out a couple. But uh, February is a fucked up month. Like, we should really all just stay inside. Like, there was a lot of fucked up history. Um, I found a lot of history from, like, other countries and stuff. Like, February 9th's a bad day. So just stay inside, okay? <clears throat> just stay inside, guys. In February, I mean, but we're, we're not giving February a bad because... I mean, there's a couple of good things in there, but uh, I'm just saying, like... Well, the problem is, is that, like, February is Black History Month. So we have, we, we, we have a lot of, like, just... It's... It's an, it's an insane month because we really are trying to, you know, uh, recognize the Black History Month for only a month out, out of 12 months. We give the month of Black History Month the 20, the only month that's the shortest month in the entire year. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of things that we do, but February is a, it, it, it's a roller coaster uh, for a month in history. If you look through a lot of history, Crawford is right. There, it's, it, it's fucked up, man. Like, it's a bad month for the world. It is. It really is. And, and a lot of things that we do, it, you look at it and you're like, why did it take us so long? I will say, though, that today on um, my drive to work, I was listening to NPR. I know. Shocking, guys. Shocking. Oh, what? Not you. <laughs> and uh, but they did a, a small bit from StoryCorps. And I, I really can't wait to actually listen to it later. And it was the cutest thing. So StoryCorps is doing this little, you know month of February, Valentine's Day, couples in the military. And it was this adorable couple. Um, this guy was 100 and his husband was 76, 75. No, 78. Shit. Okay, they're like 16 years apart, okay? So there's that. And uh, But it was really cute about how, you know, these guys had lived these completely separate lives and they actually both met each other in the veterans' hospital. Uh, at their older age, because they're both veterans, one served in World War II, one served in Vietnam. Oh. They met each other at the Veterans Hospital. They fell in love and they got married in 2013 when it became legal in America. And 
they were so funny because, you know, you're listening to the 70 something year old and this 100 year old talk on StoryCorps about their love life. And, you know, the ones like, you don't know who's the bride, but, you know, it's totally him. And then the 100 year old's like, hey, it, it just, it made me laugh and giggle because here's two gentlemen who both of them fought very, who fought in traumatic wars. You know, they fought in World War II and Vietnam, very traumatic wars for our country. And it wasn't until 2013, and you're talking about 30 to 50 years later, that these men met into a veterans hospital and then were able to get married there. And it was so, their story is so cute. So if you get the opportunity, go on StoryCorps and just, anyways, I love StoryCorps in, in general. Like, yeah, I do too. Their, their cartoons will break me and their stories will always get to me and I love them all but that was a really cute side note but it's you know it's one of those things that I, I just I don't understand why it took us so fucking long like why did we get married in 2013 but 2014 before we would even understand about you know the extended rights of same sex partners how can we legalize marriage but not extend their rights and it's it's fucked up in my opinion Oh, it's kind of like medical marijuana in Ohio. Like, it was legalized in September of last year, but nobody's going to be able to get it until, like, 2018 or something. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. Like, y'all knew this was coming. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, what else is coming? There are Crawford. Are the Russians coming for us? The Russians are coming. We're about to go through another red scare. Are you a commie? I am a commie. Listen here, comrade. Um... Yes. How about those Russians? Oh, seriously, we just cannot get along with those guys. It's just constant back and forth for like the last hundred years. Yeah, and so in the last few days, um, you know, we've heard some new information coming out about the Russian meddling in our elections, um, the Russian bots that are taking the internet by storm. Uh, we've also heard about Russia that is still using uh, Cold War tactics to drive their agenda. Um, and I, I, I don't know what it's called, but we're still calling it. I don't know what they call it their agenda, you know. I, I just was like, uh, I guess you'd call it their, their plan of action. Yeah, their plan of action, exactly. It, it seems to go in line with everything else. Um, so those who are uh, who are unfamiliar with what a bot is, a bot is an automated Twitter or other social forum account that doesn't have a real human being behind it, but it's just a program. So Russia and in the Cold War, it, it was a Soviet. So essentially always exploit existing conflicts. They exploit existing cracks in our political system, which as everyone knows in America, there's a lot of them. Right. Uh, and then they widen those crack and they hammer the wedges um, into them uh, to raise questions about whether or not uh, things like Black Lives Matter versus white supremacy rallies. You know, those are things that were actually, um, uh, how can I put it? They were, it's not. Uh, they exasperated well, it by reporting yes, fake you. news and then commenting. Those bots would comment on Facebook and yep. just fueled the fire. And, you know, so it. They uh they really do like to meddle and that's their that's the way they do it is by exploiting existing conflicts and cracks in our political system and divisions between us. Um, well, and that's what's funny is because everybody talks about America has never been so divided, but it actually if we crack down on the system itself. So right. my brother actually was a huge follower of this conspiracy theory, this guy that was on Twitter, blah blah blah, and come to find out he was actually a Russian bot. Exactly, uh, but he came off very human-like. Yeah, you know, he came off with hard all this. To figure to decipher a bot from a real person sometimes. Exactly, and so uh, we've decided. And, and my okay, we haven't. I definitely have decided that a majority of this American conflict and division, uh, as much as I have preached about it in so many episodes, and though it ha it does exist, and though it's good that we exasperate it so we understand the problems. The reason it was defined, the reason that it was defined to us, was not because of Barack Obama. But you actually have to get credit to the Russian bots, yep. uh, who actually exploited uh, our our problems in this country, and they went after us and they attacked us via Twitter, That's Reddit, Facebook, all of it. And so it was the Russian bots that actually created. Now. It was obviously, you know, the women's rights movement, the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, the Socialist Democrats movement, Progressive Democrats movement. They did that individually, right. but they were able to be formed and inspired. They were inspired by seeing the division and having it exploited uh, into something that was much bigger. And then the, then the Russians came in with their bots. 
And then they started their own, you know, White Lives Matter. Da, da, da. They were a majority of all of that. They started that. So we were fighting. We were fighting a computer. We weren't fighting another human being. We were fighting computers for our voice as to why we mattered. And that is, to me, is such a fucking ironic shit. Like, we're talking about division of race. But really, the biggest problem came for the fact that we were dividing ourselves over a computer that wasn't even real. And instead of actually talking to each other face to face and saying, this is a problem, but we actually can fix it. We can actually fix this. But the bots on the Internet is making us feel as if there is no way of fixing this problem where when you get two people in a room together, they do fix it. I think Vice News is the one uh, that's doing that uh, small series that what's it called? I think I think it's actually semi along the lives of it's not along the lines of like white voices matter, right. but it's it's a guy that's going out there to these white supremacists and and he's black and he's going out there and he's really getting into oh, them. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Con- yeah, he's getting these conversations like, why don't you like me? He's talking exactly. to Richard Spence. He's talking to these guys and he's willing to go up to these guys who supposedly hate him, you know, for his color and he's trying to define why and and it shows. If you watch any of these little moments by Vice News. It's hard for them to be hateful in person. It is. And and when they come to realize that there's actually more of uh, things that they actually get along with. And they're not so divided. There's they're divided by, by bloodline, but they're not really divided by their theories of, of humanity. Right. And our our division has has become of the Russians, and I think that's so fucking ironic. I really do. It is uh, it's quite interesting, and I think that they'll have a major impact on our midterms. So, yeah, um, we'll I think we'll see a lot of kick up about that. It's gonna be very interesting, don't you say? It is. It is. And how about that Nancy Pelosi there? Oh, I know, right? Set a historical record for longest continuous speech. I know. Go Nancy Pelosi, even though I think that you're a dumbass. But go on. Right. Uh, Not you, Nancy Pelosi. She by the is way, old. Uh, I. Uh, well, we think Joe Kennedy is going to go for a seat, whether or not the Dems win the House in November. Uh, she can fight all she wants, but the Dems are divided as fuck right now. And truthfully, they need to stop with the two-party system already. Seriously, I'm sick of only having two choices. <laughs> right. No, ha- no one has won yet, and we are suffering. Kudos to the triumph of women, though, in the White House, outlasting. Speaking of women, let's play a little true versus untrue game. Ooh, let's uh, let's see. True or untrue, Crawford? Um, my favorite color is purple. Oh, that's um, untrue. That is untrue. Is that it? is untrue. Was... It is. My favorite color is blue. Um, true or untrue, I am into butt sex. <laughs> Ooh, that's actually really hard. Yeah. I want to say that's, that's what she said. <laughs> I want to say true. I'm true. I'm, I'm a bu- true. I'm, I'm a butt virgin. <laughs> nice. I'm saving it for marriage in case this doesn't work out. Um, my bin chip, like the front's wrecked, but you can come in the back door. True or untrue? I have never ate swordfish. Hmm. True. That is true. See, I, I thought you know maybe I could see that you're a, a woman of journey tastes, but uh, I do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, true or untrue? I think of a good one. I'm really into tending and loving my plants. I have a huge house full of them. That would be true then. No, untrue. I don't have a <laughs> single plant. My cats would eat those motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, they would. Yeah, they would. That's fine. Um, true or untrue, I really enjoy the smell of fabric softener. Oh, true. I do. Uh, I who, take I, fabric softener sheets and I just sometimes like just carry them in my pocket. I love the smell like if you're outside and you can smell your dryer. Oh my god, it's the best smell oh ever. My god. Ooh, that's nice, that's nice. Um, true or untrue, I drank like four cans of soda a day. <laughs> true. Oh, untrue. <laughs> what? I haven't had a can of soda in six months. Shut your dirty pie hole. Yeah, I'm really, uh, really working on it. This is what happens when we work remotely. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> you can't see my face. True or untrue, 
I hate cardboard. Oh. Yeah, that's probably true. Who doesn't? Like, get the shit out of my house. No, I love a good box. I really do. I'm a little bit of a box collector. I fucking hate cardboard. I hate the way that it feels on your nails. I hate the way that it fucking sounds when it, like, I, 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 there are, there are a few things, folks. There's also one thing that will always get me to squirm, which is rubbing your fucking teeth with your fingers. Okay? Oh. It's fucking gross. Stop it. You're not getting a plaque off by taking your little finger in your nasty little skin oh, with gross. all that bacteria. You and do just that in the bathroom. You don't do that in front of others. That's not right. I hate the, like, for me, I can visually hear the texture of your finger on your enamel, and it's disgusting. And I fucking hate the dentist. I have a severe problem going to the dentist because of that. Like, the latex gloves all up in your mouth. Picking gross. at it, it's they're just so gross. Your thing, and they're sucking your spit. It's awful. It's worse than giving birth. It, it's so it's so fucking so terrible. It, it, it's so uncomfortable. Thank you. Uh, hey, Crawford. What? By the way, uh, it is the Winter Olympics time. What is your favorite uh, Winter Olympic sport? Um, I think we talked a little bit about this the other day, and I want to say figure skating. But I also like that little game that they use brooms and they push that little ball. Oh, that's called, um, I hold on, curling. That. Curling. Oh, yes, I don't want to come watch the hell out of that when I'm stoned. Yeah. Oh, shit, here he goes. Watch him. Oh, but swimming, I'm really into those muscles. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I love the swimming competition, but when they're just walking around with their little suits half hanging off, like, Lord Jesus. Is that, now that's, but yeah, you know. I love swimming. Well, that's Summer Olympics, but, uh, what, figure skating. I like curling. What else is there to choose from? I'm not really into skiing. Ooh, I like a toboggan or two. Mm, yeah, tobogganing. Ski, ski, yeah, right? <laughs> Get in that tunnel. Ooh, look at the way he took that turn. Mm. Get it. <laughs> That's gross. That's gross. That's really awful. Uh, it's, not, it's not awful at all. It is. It's interesting. Uh, let's see. We have got... See, and that's just it. Like, I like... Bob sling. I like curling. I like figure skating, um, freestyle skiing, ice hockey. I mean, that's always I fun like to watch. I like ice hockey, but who doesn't? You know how to piss off a Canadian? Um, oh God! When they're talking about hockey, ask them like, "Do you mean field hockey or ice hockey?" <laughs> <laughs> they get so fucking mad. And I'm not. That's not a joke. Joke. I actually have done that and been like, I actually did that one time. I was talking to somebody online, and he was about hockey, and I was like, mean, field hockey or ice hockey? And he was Canadian, and he ripped my face off virtually. Oh, wow. I was That's... like, I am so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I like a lot of, and I, we talked about this earlier, I am a huge fan. Me and Crawford both are huge fans of just the Summer Olympics, just because. Oh, God, yes. That, yeah. I got them all. You can turn anything on. It's fucking racing, like the, 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 you know, the, the sprints. You're talking about hurdles. I used to be in track, so I'm a big shot and disc uh, girl because that's what I used to do, so I love watching that. Well, um, do you remember, like, I don't know, maybe when we were growing up when the Olympics came on, that shit was on all week on TV. That's all we yeah. watched. You didn't turn it from the Olympics or you got your butt whooped. Yep, exactly. Not I, bad, I but agree. just like you need to calm down before you get beat up. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I like the Winter Olympics. I mean, <clears throat> sorry guys, I, I do enjoy like you know the speed skating on ice. I enjoy the ski jumping. A lot of that stuff I actually do enjoy, but I'm not as enthused about it. I don't sit there at, during the Summer Olympics. I will get home from work, make myself a cocktail, and just sit in front of the TV and be like, "Shut your dirty fucking faces." It's time for the fucking Olympics. America! You know, Michael Phelps. No, no, no longer Ryan Lockie. I mean, he's just a douche, but he was just a fun douchebag to watch. Um, but I, I, I mean, I do. I, I, I don't like the long distance biathlon. I don't, I don't understand. Uh, it, to me, watching the biathlon. When our lovers are born, let's just say it. Like, there's two of yeah. us that are cool. I don't know. I, I almost feel like that's got to be a consensus in America. Yeah, I think that this is the real division, Summer Winter Olympics. You know what? Maybe it's just really <laughs> popular for other countries where it's cold a lot all the time, which is Ohio, but, I mean, we're lazy, so. And we like bonfires, so Summer Olympics is better for us anyways because we can, you know, now that we've got all these great things where we can just, you know, 
broadcast on our fucking projectors out to our like our backyard. We could just put up a white sheet, watch the Summer Olympics over a bonfire. You know what I'm saying? That right. that's that's how Ohio does it because we want to kill our deer, burn it over a bonfire, and watch the Olympics and be America all day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're so I. Uh, yeah, so thanks, guys, by the way, uh, for tolerating us. We have made it through 20... We are two episodes away from being 25 episodes. Yeah, which is like a quarter of a hundred, so... Uh, it, That's pretty big. Should we do a party cast? Yeah, a, a huge party. Number 50, like, if, when we make it to number okay. 50, it's going to be, like, uh, full-on. We do... Uh, we'll get some of those thingies that, you know... Oh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, a little sound effects That'll and stuff. That'll be so annoying. People only listen to the first 15 minutes and be like, these bitches. Uh-uh. <laughs> they gotta stop. Uh, our, our goal is, though, is that eventually uh, we are going... We've had uh, quite a few um, interactions with other podcasts that want to talk about doing crossover podcasts. Uh, like, big nerdy questions. Uh, Nick and Vince. A few others that have talked about, you know, all of us. You know, back and forth. Uh, Politics with Dummies, I know that they were, they did a shout out for us on their last podcast and talked about possibly doing, uh, you know, all of us being together. So when uh, Crawford and I, I think would be really fun when we can actually get together in the garage, that the two of us get together and we can collaborate with other podcasts and we can all make it an episode. Um, be amazing and awesome and super awesome. And yeah, and we'll cool. get some interviews in, and we'll start really trying to hammer out the details of what we want to do um, for the next 25 episodes. So we really want to say, for, at, at number 23, uh, before we get to number 25, before we get to number 50, we do want to thank you guys for your listens. Unwaver- yeah, for your listens, for your support, for your downloads. Uh, visiting our website, milesandcrawford.com. I know that you guys still don't want to visit on Patreon slash MC Variety Hour and donate your money to us. We would appreciate it. You can donate to us on Podbean. We're really, you know what would really help out with our audio problems? If we had money to get new audio equipment. equipment. That sure would uh, be nice. That sure would be nice. Or if we could just upgrade some of our sites and so that way we weren't, you know, each spending, you know, between 15 to $30 a month uh, just so you guys could listen to us. So, uh, not that we don't appreciate it, but sometimes, you know, 30 bucks is a fucking gas a tank in your car, a fucking fast food dinner, and, like, a pack of smokes. So, we would, oh, and or a, co- a cup of coffee. Like, we would just really appreciate oh, yeah. some avocado toast and a fucking cup of coffee and a pack of smokes. I mean, that this podcast to so-and-so who sent us the most amazing bag of coffee. I mean, uh, yeah, we are. We really are. I'm. I. It honestly would take me all but a week if you donate it to our 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 Patreon. You give me uh, ten bucks. I will call my local coffee shop and I will have them make yes. our own coffee brew. And I will send you a pound bag of your own, especially Miles and Crawford, uh, whole bean picked or out ground, especially for you. It's picked out especially for you, but we just need you to dedicate ten dollars a month, and uh, that would be fantastic. And if you need more coffee, you just say, hey, I need another bag of coffee, and I'll send it your way. So, I mean, it's pretty simple. Oh. Uh-oh, the cats are not happy. Well, they, they held down the fort for a little bit, but it was bound to happen. Absolutely. Those are my cats. You know, they're assholes, everybody. I'm sorry. What the fuck is Syrian avocados? I, I don't really know. I, I just <laughs> clicked open I'm a sorry. new tab, and that's what came up was it said explore nutrition, and it's all about avocados. Like fuck you, Google. <laughs> even... Fuck you for listening to us. You sound right. the That's some bullshit, ain't it? Yeah, it is some bullshit. That's, that's weird. Some avocado, bullshit. whatever. What Guess is avocado? Is. Avocado latte, Syrian avocado, and Muslim avocado. That's wow, Google. Wow. All I did was open up a new tab. I used Chrome, everybody, and that's what. I was just sending Miles a screenshot of it. Like, it says, what is an avocado? Explore nutrition. That's so weird. Just because I eat avocados doesn't mean you can assume that about me, okay? Yeah, bitches. Cunts. See you next cunts. Tuesdays. And by the way, I'm no longer allowed to apologize for using the word cunt, so I will no longer apologize for the oh, using the word cunt. I've not apologized, so I'm okay with that. Yeah, fucking bitches. I'm going to say what I want to say. Cunt. Cunt. All right, so, uh, ooh, look at us. One hour on the dot. Um, I know. Do we have anything else to add? Um, fuck Trump. Fuck Trump. I think we should say that every podcast, though. So. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I think that's it for this week, everybody. Thanks for listening to us. Have an a amazing weekend, or whenever we post this. Have a, an amazing two days after that. <laughs> uh, well, see you next week. See you next week, guys. Bye. Bye.